In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting love. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command. May always merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. Be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. Immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be mentioned among you, as is fitting among holy ones. No obscenity or silly or suggestive talk, which is out of place, but instead thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no immoral or impure or greedy person, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. So do not be associated with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. The word of the Lord. Speak to God. Behave like God has as his very dear children. Behave like God as his very dear children. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Behave like God as his very dear children. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Behave like God as his very dear children. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff with the, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Behave like God as his very dear children. Your word, O oh Lord, is truth. 
consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was teaching in a synagogue on the Sabbath, and a woman was there who for 18 years had been crippled by a spirit. She was bent over, completely incapable of standing erect. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said, Woman, you are set free of your infirmity. He laid his hands on her, and she at once stood up straight and glorified God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured her on the Sabbath, said to the crowd in reply, there are six days when work should be done. Come on those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord said to him in reply, Hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his ass from the manger and lead it out for watering? This daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years now, ought she not to have been set free on the Sabbath day from this bondage? When he said this, all his adversaries were humiliated. And the whole crowd rejoiced at all the splendid things done by him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul says today in our first reading that immorality impurity, greed, obscenity, lewd talk, are all forms of idolatry. Idolatry is a very serious sin. So why does St. Paul say these things about these particular sins? Idolatry means worshiping something other than God. It's obvious why immoral decisions and greed can push Jesus out of his rightful place as Lord of our lives. But how is telling a dirty joke or using foul language an act of idolatry. Well, Paul's list of sins are examples of what is not found in the nature of God. So we're supposed to imitate God, right? Especially our Lord Jesus. But these behaviors replace God with ungodly choices. God is supposed to be our Father, and so his nature, his blessings from his nature, always have to be our top priority. So we can remain close to him open to his love, even open to his miracles. And that's why today's responsorial psalm reminds us how to live as those who inherit God's nature. First, we make the decision to avoid sin by rejecting the ways of the wicked. That means staying away from the influences of the disrespectful and of the rebellious. At the same time, we decide we make a choice to prefer God's ways. Even if we don't fully understand at first the sacrifices and the commandments that we're called to obey, that will come in time. And because we should want to understand, we should also meditate on and study God's ways all the time, not half-heartedly and not only when it's convenient. See, because as our prayer life grows and improves, we receive even more power of the Holy Spirit and even more gifts of the Holy Spirit. This helps us to grow spiritually and the Spirit's presence within us, it won't fade whenever we have to face hard times. And then we'll be able to produce many, many good fruits in our lives in honor of the Father. But look at what happens when we let immorality in, in any sort of way become our priority or our preference. How's it work? First, for many people, they accept obscenity and suggestive, suggestive talk as that's okay, it's normal, no problem. But that makes us feel comfortable around those who are rebellious, those who are not seeking God, and soon we begin to relax spiritually. At the very classic image, a slowly heating pot of water cooking the frog who thinks he's enjoying a nice little bath. The environment begins to break down our resistance, and we begin to feel drawn to their ways. And let's be honest, this kind of feels good. We feel cool, we feel part of something, right? But we're falling into sin. We've stopped praying, and we still feel guilty about it, though. And when we feel guilt, then when we start, what do we start doing? 
making excuses and distractions to keep us from prayer. Why? Because if we know if we go back to prayer after doing this, God's going to be there saying, hey, what's going on here? And we don't want God to not be approving of us. So in order to avoid that, we unfortunately avoid prayer. In this condition, what happens? We start soaking up even more ways of the world, always thirsting for satisfaction but never getting any. And this unquenchable thirst becomes a desperate addiction. And so we rely then on the cravings of the flesh, whatever they may be. But then when we seek out those cravings, we lose touch with the loving presence of God within us. His absence then reinforces our need for that addiction. It's a bad, bad cycle. The fruit of all of this, of course, is what? Destruction. Our weakened faith withers. When hardships come, we can't even stand up. And so disconnected from God, we make more and more mistakes, enter more deeply into darkness, our unhappiness increases, thereby have, causing us to search for satisfaction in other things besides God. So no wonder the wrath of God comes upon those who are disobedient. He loves us way too much. He utterly hates what idolatry does to us. So brothers and sisters, never even start that journey. Take St. Paul's advice and completely stay away from everything that is not in the nature of God. Placing our trust into God's hands has come before him once again with our prayers and intercession. But God will continue to bless us with the peace of knowing he's just a heartbeat away with whatever gift that we need to carry on. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all civil leaders will use their positions of authority to protect and provide for the poor, the oppressed, and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish will go in devotion and love for the Holy Eucharist, be filled with the charity and compassion of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will continue to bless our seminarians and inspire many others to join them in the call to enter into religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, especially those who have to suffer by themselves, they will receive the full and merciful presence of God and the loving concern of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to love God with all of our heart, soul and mind, and our neighbor as ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions for which this Mass is being offered, for the repose of the souls of Father Raymond Gunzel and Anthony Haas, for special intentions on behalf of Kevin Obiese and Cameron Degani, and for wedding blessings for Brian and Valerie Wofford, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please take a moment to bow your heads and in silence ask God for whatever you need. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you as always for receiving our prayers, and we always are grateful for your constant presence in our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, you pray, O Lord, in the offerings you make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end. We are glad. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
say of his command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Time now for our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, My Jesus I, believe that you I believe that you are present, are present in, the most holy sacrament. in the most holy sacrament. I love you, I love you above, all things. above all things, and I desire, and I desire to, receive you to receive you into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot, at this, moment, At this moment, receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come, at least spiritually, Come at least spiritually into, my heart. into my heart. I embrace you, I embrace you as, if you as if you were already there, were already there and unite myself, and unite myself wholly, to you. wholly to you. Never permit me, Never permit me to be separated from you. Be separated from you. 
Amen. Let us pray. Mere sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in science may one day possess in truth. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below.